How's it going? So this is what you're gonna to need to do the build. A pair of pliers of some sort. A pair of cutters. Some type of file. And a pair of jewelers looping pliers. Yes. Right, this is obviously a lead weight, right? It's got no grip wires, we did that the last time. I don't have any molds with me, so please don't ask me to show you how to make lead weights. It's quite simple. Get the molds hot. Make sure there's no moisture in it at all because it will explode and take the face off you and wear gloves, respirator, pair of glasses. That's it. You'll figure it out. Most companies will sell their tails, their clips and so on as aftermarket bonus for themselves. A little bit of revenue in the future. But uh, they don't always suit everybody and they don't suit me in actual fact. I need something different, more tailored to what I need. So this is what I make anyway. I make, this is a, a medium tail version short tail version and a long tail version. The long tail version I use for sliding baits. This was made from an English cast. I'll get you some South African ones. You can see those as well. Here's the South African one, very good shape. Here's that long tail I was telling you about. There are two mil wires on those legs there. This is because this lead weight is for sliding. So it's still got a bait clip. That's so you can fish it with a rod and bottom and cast it out. You see that I have it in the video. You can check that out if you like. I'll link it in the description anyway, if you want to see it. So that's it. That's one of the ones I use there. That's a long one. Like I said, that's a medium one. And then you got the short ones, which will look like this. This is the original clip that came with this lead weight here. So that's it. But this is no good for me. It's actual spring steel that's being galvanized. But um, the coating, the galvanization gets damaged and they start to rust. And eventually they break. And I have to retire them before the point that they become dangerous and that's no good for me because I have to melt them down then and it's just a pain. So I like stainless steel. This has been hardened. They manipulate the chromium in it to harden the, the stainless steel. Originally this one here really annoying but they came without bay clips right and my after factory fix would not fit in the mold because it came the hardware that they designed for it which was not particularly good in my opinion. I redesigned most of the stuff I buy just the way I am. So what I did was I got the cast and I measured the width of the two pieces of steel together. This is 1.7 on this one here. I measured this across, got the diameter, got a drill bit. You can use a file or anything you want. It's very quick with a diamond file. You can use a diamond file or you can use a round file. Either way it's like not even five minutes work. Aluminium is very soft compared to a file and you'll eat through it. I could alter the cast in just like a minute just with one of these so i cut one groove in one groove in see if it fits if it's a little bit wobbly it doesn't matter so long as it's not at a right angle you just bend it a bit once the lead has set so when you pour them out let them sit for five ten minutes make sure the lead inside has hardened the outside lead hardens quite quickly the lead inside hardens more slowly and if you mess with it before that point they become all jiggly and nasty and you won't want to cast it most likely they're probably still safe but if it makes you doubt, you know, you've always got something in the back of your mind and you're not concentrating on what you're doing. So I'm gonna make some of these today. I'm gonna to make some two mil ones for my friends here. The tails and the bait clip are one piece in this. And you might also notice that it's a different shape to the ones that, that you're used to. That is because this is a South African style of bait clip. And it's actually better than the ones that we use that just stick out at an angle because it's too easy for the bait to unclip. With these ones, it stays in much, much better. Believe me. And when it hits the water, I know you think it might not release, but it does every time. So I've got absolutely no problem with it. That's an original one there, right? Actually, this one's even shorter than that one, but they still work the same, trust me. So now I'm gonna show you how to make one. I would say about 12 centimeters. Yes, measure stuff on your body so you can use it as a tape measure. It saves you a lot of effort. No, not that. <laughs> so the first one I do is the bait clip, right? You're gonna put one thing on each end, right? This is a pair of jewelers looping pliers. You can find them in Ali. Just go into Ali or any other site that supports this type of thing and just put in the search jewelers stainless steel looping pliers. They come in many different types. You could just use a round nose pliers, but I like these because they're stepped and it gives you greater accuracy when you're bending stuff. For the bait clip, I'm gonna use this one here and I just clamp it like that, right? And th there's no rocket science to this at all. There we go, right? 
So you want it to go into the lead weight a fair distance, okay? At least to here. If it's up here, it's gonna stick out and stuff and it won't hold properly, right? So you want it to bend your loop so it's in the middle of the lead weight. So I'm gonna start there, right? And I'm gonna use the second of the smallest, this one here. I put it back there like that. I'm gonna bend it away from me, then up, okay? So then you got that. You can make this whatever size suits you. This is perfect for what I want. So then you just get another pair of pliers and you flatten it. Okay, yes. You can see where I'm going, right? We're nearly done already. This is gonna be a short one. Then I, I use also the second one for, for, the, for the loop as well. Just make sure everything's straight. I mean, it's not absolutely crucial, but it's always nice. The things aren't all wonky. So then I bend it like that. And then I take it in there like this. And then using this as a pivot point, I just straighten it out. Okay, then it looks like that. You take your pliers again and you crush it. So there you go. Quick and easy, simple, inexpensive. You're bored one evening, whatever. You make 10, 20 of these, do you for the year. Take you half an hour or something like that. And it's time well spent because it saved you money. That's money you can spend on bait. That's money you can spend on accommodation. That's money you can spend on fuel. That's money that you can use for something else that will help you catch better fish. If you're static and stuck in the one area all the time, you're not gonna do as well as if you go somewhere else and, and target other fish. And also, it, it's more fun. It opens up your horizons. I can highly recommend it. <laughs> so another thing is the bait clip. Really expensive bait clips. That's just another thing you have to add to the, the list of expenses when you're fishing. It saves me a small fortune, literally. So I'm not fond of these mechanical ones. They're finicky. They're just as bad as these ones, really. A piece of elastic, whatever, they're knackered. Same with these ones. I mean, the only advantage is for off the ground casting, as far as I can see. If you're having problems with these bait clips unclipping because of the bait contacting the rig body, right? Just be aware of that and make the baits to fit the rig body. Okay, that's it. That's why I use the South African uh, rigs because they make room for the bait. That's why I just crossed over completely. So I am Billy, this is Billy passing on some knowledge and a few skills. Wherever you are in the world, remember, I'll see you on the beach. Bye.